What's up guys, James Brandon here. So today I'm gonna go over five things that I do to pretty much every travel and landscape photo that I take into Photoshop. So let's go. Okay, so before we got started, I had to go throw a hoodie on because it's a little chilly in here, but here we are in Photoshop, so let's get started. Okay, we have this image. This is from Two Jack Lake in Banff National Park, and it was an incredible, incredible sunrise. As you can see, we had this amazing alpine glow on the back of Rundle, uh, Mount Rundle, and the lake was frozen over for the most part, and there was this huge, heavy snowfall that came through um, the evening before and dumped all this fresh snow on the trees, so it was awesome. Um, but this is a good image to showcase these these things that I do to every single photo because there's not a ton going on here. We have a pretty good uh, separation of the sky and the mountains here. So let's get started, okay? All right, the first thing that I do um, to every image is remove distractions. So that's step one. And to do that, I'll usually just hit shift command N, which would be shift control N on a PC and we'll call this distractions, all right? And what I wanna do is just go through and clean up anything in the image that uh, doesn't need to be there. In this case, I'll hit J to bring up my spot healing brush. It actually was already up, but this is where you would find it if you don't wanna use the shortcuts. It's over on the left-hand side, right there, spot healing brush. Okay, so we've got a dust spot here. I'll zoom in to 100%. Come up here and you can see it right there. Not a whole lot to do here, but we have a dust spot there. We have what looks like it might be a dust spot here, but that also might just be like a part of a cloud. But nonetheless, I think I want to get rid of it. And then this little part of the lake here that's unfrozen. This is kind of a toss up. You can see that it's just it's in the corner and I, I'm kind of a stickler for corners. I like to keep them distraction free and it's probably not going to be a big deal, but you know, maybe there's a chance that it's going to pull somebody's attention down there and it's just not really, you know, anything worth keeping in my opinion. So what I'll do is, um, trying to come up with the best way to get rid of this, probably the stamp tool. So we'll just hit S. Okay. And then hit the option key to sample that. If, this isn't working for you, you'll wanna make sure that you have the sample all layers turned on. By default, it'll probably be set to current layer and you'll be sampling from this blank one right here, which means nothing will happen. So you wanna make sure to, uh, all, all layers, sorry, is turned on there. And then you wanna make sure that you have 100% chosen as well. So we'll hit option and then we'll just paint along here and just get rid of that. And then I like to just sample, you know, sporadically as I go along and there we go. Okay, we'll just turn this off and on like that and that looks pretty good. Okay, and then as far as distractions go, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Okay, one shortcut that you've got to learn and you've got to add to your bag of tricks in Photoshop is what I call the claw because I use it all the time. And the way that you do that is you hit Shift Option Command E. So this is why it's called the clock because I use my pinky for shift, my thumb for option, my index finger for command, and my middle finger for E. So my ring finger is the only one not being used there. And what it does is it takes all the work that you've done and creates a new stamped layer. Okay, and that's going to take us to the next thing that we want to do, which is the crud cutter. Now, you can probably come up with a better name for this. Uh, this is just what I've called it. And you'll see why here in a second. We don't, we're not gonna need this layer here in a second, but you have to create the stamped layer. And I'll try to explain that here in a bit. So, okay, so we've, we've got this new stamped layer. And what we wanna do now is go over to our channels. And then this is where you get into like luminosity masking, which is a whole other topic. Um, it's pretty complicated, it takes a while to get the hang of. But this is kind of just like dipping your feet into luminosity masking and it's really easy once you've done it a few times. So when we click over to channels, we're just going to go to the RGB and we're going to command click the RGB channel. Then we're going to go back to layers and then we're going to hit command or control J. And that's why we had to create this new stamped layer because it was Photoshop was looking 
at the top layer or whatever layer was selected and it was using that to create this. So if we had used this one, it wouldn't have had anything to look at. So now that we've created that luminosity mask, um, use that mask or that selection to create a new layer from what was selected, we can pretty much just get rid of that. We don't need it anymore. And then we'll call this crud cutter. There we go. We can turn it on and off and nothing's gonna happen. That's because we need to set a blend mode for it. And then to do that, we'll go over to the blend mode drop down menu here, come down and you can use soft light or overlay. It doesn't really matter. I like to start with overlay. And if it's too extreme, you can either go to soft light like that. It's gonna be a little bit more subtle or you can just pull the opacity back like that. And that's what I'll usually do is I'll just kind of play with the opacity and get it to where I like. But if we go up to 100%, this is why I call it the crud cutter, because if we turn it on and off, you can see what it's doing. It's kind of what a luminosity mask does for starters. If we just hit option and then click this layer right here, you can see that it looks really weird. But what it's done is it's created all of the pixels that are 50% bright or brighter. So everything on a scale of one to 100, everything from 50 to 100 has been selected and everything from 50 to zero has been left out. So that's why you see all the highlights. So from there, we're setting a blend mode, which takes those highlights, those brighter pixels in the image and adds contrast to them. So that's why we're getting that. And it kind of has the effect of like taking your, it, I kind of like to think of it as like, there's this film, there's this dirty, gross film over your image and you use this adjustment layer to kind of cut through that and it kind of just purifies the entire image. And you can see that effect here as I turn this on and off. Okay, so we'll take that opacity down and kind of just dial it up to where we think we look. it looks good. And that's probably good right there at 90%. Okay, step three, it's gonna be noise reduction. So we'll use that claw again, shift option, command E and we'll double click this and call it noise. You can call it noise reduction too, doesn't matter. And here's what I like to do. Photoshop does not have a very good method for reducing noise, it just doesn't. There are ways to reduce noise inside of Photoshop, but I just haven't found one that really works that well. So I use uh, plugins, and the two that I use the most are gonna be On One and Topaz Labs. For this, I'll use on one, so we'll go to the drop down filter, on one, and then on one effects 2018. Okay, we've already got a noise reduction filter selected, but we'll just get rid of it so I can show you how to create it if you've never done it before. But inside of effects, you'll just go to add filter on the right side, and then choose noise reduction. And then you have all of these um, starting points that you can choose from. So I'll usually just go with strong, and a lot of the uh, sh keyboard shortcuts are the same inside of on one, which is awesome. So we'll hit command one, or I'm sorry, command plus, which will take us and zoom us into the image. And then we can use this loop to kind of scroll around inside. And we can see here, we can just turn this on and off. If you look right here in this area, I'll get a little bit closer. Come on. There we go. Like that. I'll just turn this on and off and you can see what it's doing. It's kind of just reducing that noise for us a little bit. And then you can play with like the luminance, the detail. I can pull this detail all the way back and take luminance all the way up for kind of like the maximum effect. All right, so luminance up, detail down. That's gonna give us the most extreme look and look what it's doing to the mountains. It's, it's wrecking them. So that's fine. You just have to keep that in mind because noise reduction and sharpening are not filters that you wanna to apply to the entire image. So we'll hit done. And then that's gonna take us back inside of Photoshop. Okay, so here we are back inside of Photoshop. We've got the noise reduction applied. If we hit command one, we'll see that the mountains and the trees are just utterly wrecked. There's nothing useful here. But if we look at the sky, it looks pretty good. We've removed the noise from it. It looks nice and creamy. That's perfect. All right, so what we'll do now is we'll add a mask to this image. And I like to add a black mask and then mask out what I don't need, or mask in what I, what I need, rather, is a probably a better way to say it. So 
Adding this black mask on top of the noise reduction is going to hide the noise reduction from the entire image. So it's like we never did anything at all. So from here, we need to grab a selection brush like so. We'll resize it like that. And I'll probably just go down here to the background layer and use that as the one that I'm going to pull from. So it has something to look at when I'm creating the selection because we have a black mask over this one, so that's not going to work. All right, and then I'm just going to go along and let Photoshop do the best that it can at creating a selection for me. Now, it did a great job right here because we have a really obvious separation of the sky and the mountains. But when we get right here, it's probably going to start failing because you can see that this cloud is obscuring the border of the mountain. So as we go along here, you can see that it's going to pop down there. Okay. All right. So you can see that it just cuts straight through the mountain like so. All right, so that's fine. I'm not really that worried about it. But we'll come back up here to the mask and we'll hit delete and then command D to deselect that selection. All right, and now we just need to clean this up a little bit. So I'll hold down Z and then drag to zoom in here. Bring out my brush. All right, we'll paint with like 80% opacity. And then I'm just gonna come through with a black brush and then just paint into this mountain here to bring that detail back. Because I don't want that noise reduction on the mountains at all. And you can spend as much or as little time as you want on this, creating the perfect mask. It's up to you. For the sake of this video, I'll keep it a little bit more brief so we don't spend all day creating a mask here. But I'll just go along the top here like that. All right, and there we go. And if I turn this on and off, you can see the difference here. So there we go, there's noise reduction. Okay, step four is to sharpen the image. So again, we're gonna do the claw, shift, option, command E, and we'll call this sharpening. All right, so with sharpening, I like to do that inside of Photoshop. There's all kinds of plugins to sharpen your images, but I found the one that works best is going up to filter, other, and then high pass. So this is kind of a weird method of sharpening. It's not intuitive at all. Most people aren't even gonna know it's there if they've never used it before. It doesn't say sharpening in the, uh, in the description whatsoever. But the basic premise of how to use it is to go to high pass and then choose a radius. And for my camera, which is putting out like 42 megapixel images, I like to do a radius of like 2.6 pixels. And that does a pretty good job for me. So I'll hit OK. And it's going to give us this really weird, wonky looking image. And what we do from here is we, again, go to our blend modes and choose either overlay or soft light. So we'll choose overlay and I'll hit Command-1 to zoom in to 100%. All right, and then just check this out. This is why I like it. It's a lot more subtle than most other methods of sharpening an image. It doesn't uh, you know, create like haloing around the edges or anything like that. It doesn't scream that the image has been sharpened. It's just nice and subtle, and it does a really good job. So turn this on and off. All right. Go up here just so you can get a better idea of what it's doing here. So it does a really good job. Okay, Command-0 to fill the screen. And what I'm going to do here is hold down the Option key and then just grab this mask and pop it up there. So we've just duplicated the mask. We don't have to create it again. And then since we're doing the opposite, we're sharpening instead of reducing noise, I'll hit Command-I to invert that mask. So. With masking, of course, white reveals while black conceals. And we want to reveal the sharpening on the mountains. So that's what we've done with this mask here, okay? We've sharpened the white part and we've left sharpening off of the black part. And then with this one, we've reduced noise in the white part and left the noise alone in the black part, okay? So there we go, that's sharpening. And I'll usually not leave it at 100%. I'll kind of like go back and forth and just bring it up to around somewhere around there, just to where I can start seeing the difference that's being made. Okay, 
that's it. So that's sharpening. And step five, that's going to be the Orton effect. And I usually do this very, very subtly. This is kind of like a bonus step. It's one that I don't even do all the time. It's just if I think the image could benefit from it, I'll try it out and see if applying it at all, you know, is gonna make a, a good bit of difference. So to do the Orton effect, I like to create it manually. Of course, there are actions like the TK actions that can do this um, a lot quicker, but I just like to create them manually. That's just my preference. So to do that, we'll go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. And this is, again, this is gonna depend on your camera and how big of an image it produces. I like to do around between 30 to 40 pixels and I'll hit okay. And it's gonna give us this blurry looking image. The next thing we're gonna do is go to image, adjustments, and then brightness contrast. And then for brightness, I usually like to do somewhere between like seven to 10. So we'll just do like eight. And then contrast, I like to do like 80 to 90%, um, somewhere around there, or 80 to, 80 to 90 rather. So we'll hit that, okay. And it's gonna give us this really weird looking image. But what you do now is you take this down to 0% and then you just bring it up. And it's usually gonna work somewhere between like 10 to 20%. So as I start bringing this up, you'll see the effect that it's making. If I go overboard, you can see that it's kind of just creating this like, eth like ethereal, surreal kind of like glow to the image. It's taking all the colors and kind of just like bleeding them together and just making the whole image kind of glow. So the key here is subtlety. So 30%, probably too high. 20%, that's probably on the upper edge of what you wanna do. But I think maybe right around there, that's a good place to stop. So in this case, we stopped at 16%, but if I turn this off and on, you can see the difference that it's making. Okay. So there we go, guys. That's the five things that happen to just about any image of mine that goes into Photoshop. So if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, do me a favor, I'm gonna create a lot more videos going forward. So hit that subscribe button and then hit that little bell next to it and make sure that you get notified anytime I create a new video. So thanks guys and have a good one, bye.